What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that allows you to use micro meshes in order to create realistic looking cloth, chain mail, other things like that directly inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Simply Micro Mesh is an add-on from the developer that brought us Simply Cloth, um, Simply Material, Simply Wrap, um, several different add-ons. This one in particular is designed to help you create things like chain mail and armor, basically anything that's made up of something that repeats a geometric object along a surface. And so you can check this add-on out on the Blender Market. And so basically this tool comes with a number of different micro mesh presets that you can use in order to quickly create things like chain mail. Note that you can also use your own micro mesh objects if you want as well. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that it looks. And so this is going to come with two different files. It's going to come with an asset library file that you're just going to want to unzip and add to your asset browser, as well as the file you need to install so that you get access to the add-on. And so let's jump over into Blender. And first thing you need to do is you need to make sure in your preferences that you've installed this. And specifically, you want to make sure that you've enabled the Simply Micro Mesh option right here. Um, one other thing is this new version is only for Blender 3.5 and higher. It has been built to kind of work with the new geometry nodes in there. So if you try to run it on an older version, I believe you're going to get an error. But let's take a look at the way this works. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to take an object that you have inside a Blender and it's going to apply one of these presets to it um, in order to simulate cloth or armor or other things like that. So let's start with uh, kind of the typical application here, which might be like a chain mail. And so the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna select our mesh right here, and then we're gonna click on the option for add micro mesh. And so when you do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to take an object that's inside a blender and it's going to basically um, repeat or apply that to a surface over and over and over again like this. So if we take a look at this one, right, notice how what it's doing is just repeating this micro mesh 45 object in here. And so in this case, right, this micro mesh 45 object is basically just a pair of chains, chains that it's repeating over and over again. Now let's say that you wanted to use something different than that mesh. So let's say instead of the two chains here, you wanted to use maybe these like four chains right here, or the ones with like the little chains on the side. Well, I could drag that in here, and then I can click on this object and go into the micro mesh settings, which by the way, you can see under user interface if you click on micro mesh. But now let's say I was to select this micro mesh 47. Notice how this is going to change the object that's used in here to that micro mesh 47. And so again, notice how it's just kind of repeating this over and over again. So there's a few different things that you can do with this to kind of adjust it. So the first is you can go into your options right here and you can adjust the scale of those objects, right? And so if I scale that way down, you can see what this is doing is this is basically placing this on this surface based on the topology of the object, right? So if I was to tab into edit mode, notice how I can see the topology in here. Um, and then it's also using a subdivision modifier in order to add some of that additional geometric detail. But then I can come in here and I can adjust the size of those objects until they overlap a bit like this. So we've got this set up where they're kind of overlapping and um, you just kind of want to uh, play around with the scale a little bit like this until you get that overlapping look. And so one of the things to note about this is this is really driven by the amount of geometry in your model. So what that means is that means that I've kind of scaled these up and these are a certain size. Well, if I was to go into the subdivision surface modifier that's been placed on here and add a subdivision, notice how those are all going to get smaller, right? So the size of the detail in your uh, mesh is going to drive the number of objects that are placed in here. And then you can kind of come in here and you can kind of make adjustments from there, right? To adjust the scale. You can also adjust like the rotation of these objects, which we can take a closer look at in a second. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop this back down because it's creating a lot of geometry in here. But one of the things about this that's really cool is if we were to make a change to the mesh, right? So let's say we were to go down to the bottom of this object and we'll keep it really simple for right now. So let's say we were to go down to the bottom of this object, jump into sculpt mode. And so let's say I was to use like the grab tool 
and pull on this, notice how this mesh is adjusting while well, the rings that are generated are moving along with that. So what you can do is you can come in here and you can sculpt different parts of your mesh and the micro mesh that's being applied to this surface is going to move along with it. Um, so what that means is that means that um, you, you could even if you wanted to, you could toggle your micro mesh off and then come in here and make some of these changes, right? So I'm just kind of moving these around um, using this tool. But then if I toggle that back on, notice how that mesh is still following along with this. It's really easy to make changes and adjustments in here um, because of the way this is applying the micro mesh to your surface. And so you can use this to create other interesting shapes and looks as well. So if you wanted like a plate armor, right? So I've brought in this little, uh, this micro mesh 78, which is basically just like a little point. Well, I could take this add a micro mesh to this we'll add that 78 well notice what this does is this whoops this creates something that looks a little bit more like plate armor right so instead of having the rings in here it's got kind of the overlapping plates in here and so one of the cool things about this and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a second window in here and so let's say I was to take this object and scale it like this, and we're gonna have to apply our rotation and scale in here in order to see this. But once I do that, notice how these all change in here as well. So remember that this is basically just taking that piece of geometry and it's just repeating it over and over again. So you can use this and so you can actually make adjustments to objects like this one, and they're going to reflect in your mesh over here, allowing for customization. Note that you could add your own mesh in here as well, and then just reference that. I mean, since this is just repeating a piece of geometry over a surface over and over again, you can really put in here whatever you want. And so there's a lot of interesting options built into this library as well, right? So some of these like plates and other things like that start getting really interesting, right? So if I add this, uh, if I add this MM106, in here, and I take a look at this. We're gonna go ahead and make this bigger, obviously. Um, and we might, I don't know if we really wanna do a randomization on here, but we might go ahead, maybe center this on the vertices, then add that scale a little bit. But notice how when you put this in here, you can really quickly simulate kind of this armor look on this piece of geometry right here. And again, if you were to come in here and make a change, right? So if you were to jump into sculpt mode, for example, again, that armor is going to change along with this. And then one other thing to notice when you're done with this, because this is using geometry nodes, right? So if you were to try to export this right now to another program, that wouldn't necessarily work the way that you want it to, but you can come in here when you're done and click on the option for apply micro mesh. And so when you hit that apply button, what that's going to do is that's going to apply this to your geometry and make it final. And notice how now if I select this, um, no longer is the micro mesh on here editable, but what it is is it's a piece of geometry that you could export to another program. So if you do wanna apply that modifier, uh, you just click on that apply button right there. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this tool. Is it something you could see yourself using? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.